Krishna 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 hey Krishna 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 Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Surabhyay Namaha 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 Mukam Karoti Vasalam Pangum Langayate Grim Yad Kripa Atmaham Bande Sri Gurum Dinatarunam Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Sri Gurum Dinataranam Hare Krishna Welcome to our ongoing Bhagavatam class reading from Canto number one chapter two entitled Divinity and Divine Service yesterday we read <coughs> number eight I believe Eight, eight is over, Guru Maharaj. Yes. So today is text number nine. <coughs> Dharmasya Dharmasya He He Apavargasya Apavargasya Narto Narto Artha Artha Arthaya Arthaya Upakalp Upakalpate Upakalpate Narthasya Narthasya Dharmai Kantasya Dharmai Kantasya Kamo Kamo Labhaya Labhaya He Smritaha Smritaha Dharmasya Yapavargasya Dharmasya Yapavargasya Nartorthayo Pakalpati Nartorthayo Pakalpati Narathasya Dharma Kantasya Narathasya Dharma Kantasya Kamola Bhaya Hismitaha Kamola Bhaya Hismitaha Dharmasya Yapavargasya Dharmasya Yapavargasya Narath Narthor Thayo Pakalpati Narthor Thayo Pakalpati Narthasya Dharma Kantasya Narthasya Dharma Kantasya Kamola Bhaya Hismitaha Kamola Bhaya Hismitaha Dharmasya Yapavargasya Dharmasya Yapavargasya Narthor Thayo Narthayo Pakalpate Narthasya Dharma Kantasya Narthasya Dharma Kantasya Kamola Bhaya Hismritaha Kamola Bhaya Hismritaha Dharmasya Hiyapavarghasya Dharmasya Hiyapavarghasya Nartho Arthayo Pakalpate Nartho Arthayo Pakalpate Narthasya Dharmai Kantasya Narthasya Dharmai Kantasya Kamo Labhaya Hismritaha Kamo Labhaya Hismritaha Dharmasya hi apavargasya Narto arthayo pakalpate Narthasya dharma kantasya Kamo labhaya hismitaha 
Occupational engagement. He certainly. Apavar yasya. Ultimate liberation. Ultimate liberation. Na. Na. Not. Not. Artaha. Artha. End. End. Arthaya. Arthaya. For material gain. For material gain. Upakalpate. Upakalpate. Is meant for. Is meant for. Na. Na. Neither. Neither. Arthasya, Arthasya of material gain. Of material gain. Dharma eka antasya. Dharma eka antasya. For one who is engaged, For one one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service. Kamaha. 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 Sense gratification. Sense gratification. Labhaya. Labhaya. Attainment of. Attainment of. He. He. Exactly. Exactly. Smritaha. Smritaha. Is described by the great sages. He is described by, by the great sages. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Sri Prabhupada Ki. Jai. All occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Furthermore, according to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. This is a very uh, hard instruction for modern day society. <laughs> For the vast majority of people, kindly repeat after me: All occupational engagements, All occupational engagements are certainly meant, are certainly meant for, ultimate for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed, should never be performed for, material for material gain. Furthermore, Furthermore according, to sages, according to sages, one who is engaged, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational Service, the occupational service should never use material gain, use material gain to cultivate sense gratification. To cultivate sense gratification. To report. We have already discussed that pure devotional service to the Lord is automatically followed by perfect knowledge and detachment from material existence. But there are others who consider that all kinds of different occupational engagements, including those of religion, are meant for material gain. The general tendency of any ordinary man in any part of the world is to gain some material profit in exchange for religious or any other occupational service. Even in the Vedic literatures, for all sorts of religious performances, an allurement of material gain is offered, and most people are attracted by such allurements or blessings of religiosity. Hmm. Why are so called why are such so called men of religion allured by material gain? Because material gain can enable one to fulfill desires which in turn satisfy sense gratification. This cycle of occupational engagements 
includes so-called religi religiosity followed by material gain and material gain followed by fulfillment of desires. This is in reference to Dharma, Artha, Kama, Muksha. Yeah. Since gratification is a general way for all sorts of fully occupied men. But in the statement of Sutta Goswami, hmm, as per the verdict of the Vedic of the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is nullified by the present shloka. Hmm. One should not engage himself in any sort of occupational service for material gain only. Nor should material gain be utilized for sense gratification. How material gain should be utilized is described as follows. That means in tomorrow's class. Yeah. Reading again the translation, all occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate liberation. They should never be performed for material gain. Furthermore, according to sages, one who is engaged in the ultimate occupational service should never be, uh, should never use material gain to cultivate a sense of gratification. Another very important instruction being given here. <clears throat> The word dharma is of course repeated twice in the verse. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada <coughs> speaks of two kinds of dharma or two levels of dharma which we often refer to, uh, especially those who are somewhat connected or involved with Varnashrama dharma. So <coughs> the the message here, of course, is that <clears throat> whether it is a religious activity that we perform or whether it is an ordinary material activity, neither of them should be uh, for the purpose of acquiring something materially, <clears throat> nor for the purpose of facilitating our activities of sense gratification. The vast majority of people in the material world don't know. As devotees, we begin to know, we begin to understand that the more we engage in activities of sense gratification, we become disqualified to practice devotional service or to understand about devotional service. And the more we engage in activities of sense gratification, oddly enough, the more we increase our suffering. <laughs> we think we are enjoying, we think that by making so many uh, plans or engaging in so many activities for sense gratification, and of course sense gratification generally means squeezing out some kind of pleasure or happiness. But the more we remain on that material platform, the more we engage <clears throat> in such activities. Just like nowadays, for example, uh, especially since the last century, um, <clears throat> and more so now in the beginning of the 21st century, uh, young people, because of uh, the whole culture in which they are brought up, and because of uh, propaganda and advertising, from a very young age, they engage in all kinds of activities of sense gratification. Prabhupada makes a comment how the whole educational system is arranged in such a way that it is uh, facilitating, encouraging, supporting, approving uh, the uh, <clears throat> open uh, and we could say from a Vedic point of view, illicit relationship or connection between boys and girls, isn't it? Uh, in one of the purports or conversations, Prabhupada mentions how uh, 
uh, teenagers, we know this for a fact, how teenagers, uh, <clears throat> young boys and young girls, uh, engage in sex life, premarital sex, you know, um, uh, co-education. That's why really culture is planned, in the, is planned in such a way that there is uh, <clears throat> intended segregation. There is planned and intended segregation between boys and girls. It is intended and planned because there's a whole purpose behind it. Uh, I was just hearing <clears throat> uh, recently how Prabhupada uh, was explaining to one devotee how in the Vedic culture a young boy is meant to be trained in brahmacharya life so that he doesn't know about sex life, he doesn't engage in sex life until he's at least 25 years of age. It means until he gets married. Of course, if he gets married earlier, Prabhupada, in another context, um, one devotee was explaining, he heard this directly from Srila Prabhupada, that uh, the Vedic system, now if you explain that, if you explain that to people, they just won't believe it, and they'll um, consider this to be totally uh, impractical, and, and, and uh, <clears throat> I mean, Prabhupada was explaining how a young girl uh, at home, <clears throat> at the age of eight, at the age of eight would be dethroned to a young boy, means would be married. She would not live with that young boy, obviously, <laughs> but every day she would go to his home and she would learn from the boy's mother how to cook for that boy what special preparations he likes uh, and on a regular basis, on a daily basis until, let's say, from the age of 8 till the age of 12 or 14 until she reaches the age of puberty and then at that time the young boy, they would live together and they would have sex life with this planned arrangement uh, <clears throat> the young girl would never look at another man and the vice versa. This is actually psychology. Uh, <clears throat> Papa would also explain that the first boy that a girl has intimate relationship with, she will never forget. So uh, this is actually Vedic standard regulating regulating we were talking about this the other day the other day regulating sense gratification especially in the matter of sex life nowadays because of this um, <clears throat> permissive society promiscuous society promiscuous society in which we live in because young boys and young girls engage in all kinds of sense gratification especially sex life by the time they reach the age of 50 or 60, uh, they uh, <clears throat> develop all kinds of um, uh, diseases, uh, especially in, in old age, they become what is called senile. Senile means they can't forget, they can't remember rather, they can't re remember even their own names, they can't remember their parents or friends. I've personally visited old age homes quite prominent in the Western countries since many, many years. Old age home is where you put your parents because uh, for various reasons uh, you cannot look after them. And uh, so you have a whole bunch of, you know, uh, old people, 50, 100 in some uh, of these old age homes. I mean, they're cared for, uh, but they're cared for by paid staff. <laughs> I mean, the Vedic tradition is that older people would stay at home and be taken care of by the members of the family. And many of these people I've seen personally, uh, they, are, they practically become like vegetable. They are brought in front of a television and they just, you know, watch. It's very, uh, very pitiful uh, <clears throat> and very unfortunate in that due to uh, <clears throat> such engagement uh, 
in, in activities of sense gratification. So this is very clearly uh, explained here <coughs> that uh, dharmasya uh, on both levels, uh, on the spiritual level um, means activities of the soul uh, and on the material level in terms of bodily activities or bodily occupations the primary goal and purpose is not at all sense gratification but is meant to help individuals advance in Krishna consciousness and that's <clears throat> that is why we've mentioned this a few times that uh, <clears throat> the Vedic literatures uh, outline what should be the ideal occupation for both men and women you see <clears throat> By following those occupations that are especially recommended, uh, then <clears throat> at, at all levels, on the physical level, emotional level, um, and in terms of one's health, one will be able to, um, uh, to make uh, progress in the ultimate uh, purpose of life, which is to advance spiritually. <clears throat> so, um, this is uh, very much part of the challenge that we have as a society and individually to, to understand that um, <clears throat> all activities, either spiritual activities or material activities, nowadays most people who perform spiritual activities, they expect something in return, isn't it? People, they'll do some puja for some material expectation. <clears throat> so Bhagavatam establishes that actually on the spiritual level or on the material level, all of our activities are meant to be totally, um, as Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, we have a right to perform our activities, but we have no right for the results. Uh, the results are totally in the hands of Krishna. We cannot demand that because I've done this, I should get this. <clears throat> so, in this way, the Bhagavatam is giving us that very uh, <clears throat> very clear and, and, and highest understanding of what dharma is. It is mentioning here the word smrita. Uh, <clears throat> sadhus by nature, sadhus by definition, this is meant to be their specialty. Mm. <clears throat> uh, to personally themselves individually cultivate this, this understanding, this knowledge, and also to give such opportunity to as many people as possible. In other words, when we see people uh, <clears throat> about to fall off a cliff, it's quite natural that, hey, <laughs> we try to stop them. Well, anyone who's engaged in unrestricted sense gratification is falling off a cliff <laughs> in that he is uh, creating his future to simply remain or to return in the material world to continue one's suffering. Uh, so this is the uh, very basic uh, understanding that we receive when we study or read the Bhagavatam and the, and, and the Bhagavad Gita. And uh, again, it's centered on this whole concept um, of what is dharma. Um, so these four uh, well-known words that I was mentioning a little earlier, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, if you like, if, if we look at it from a material point of view, it is bad, naturally. But, it, but there's the other way to look at it from a spiritual point of view. In other words, the concept, depending on the consciousness in which we uh, understand it, will be... Uh, favorable or unfavorable. 
if we, just like Prabhupada is mentioning, people who are religious and the Vedic literatures is full of such prayers or, or, or enticement, actually, for people to perform pious activities, uh, you know, giving some allurement, uh, allurement I mean, giving some kind of profit. <clears throat> but uh, the, the pure form of, there is a pure form of dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. And that pure form of dharma, artha, kama, and moksha means performing, uh, <clears throat> following, we can say, the principles of dharma for the purpose of uh, more naturally and more easily meeting our artha. Uh, our artha means, in this sense, Artha and Kama, uh, just like uh, Sarva Kama Dugama Hi. We often quote, Prabhupada often quoted this uh, uh, particular verse in the Bhagavatam. Kama. Kama can be either sense gratification or it can be material necessities of life. We have material necessities. Every day we have to eat something. We have to take rest. There's some bodily necessities are there. <clears throat> so there are prescribed manners or prescribed activities, prescribed duties that will more easily help to meet our material necessities of life. And those are prescribed and described in uh, especially the pages of the Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita as well. <clears throat> so uh, and of course, in that proper consciousness, dharma becomes pure devotional service. Uh, artha means occupation that will help to uh, provide the living entity, uh, embody living entity, uh, to meet his different material necessities, kama, and the real moksha or liberation will be to actually uh, re-establish our lost relationship with Krishna. It means to develop our devotional uh, or our devotion to the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> um, so the same word mm, when properly understood can bring us to the ultimate destination and the same word when not properly understood will keep us bound up and tied within the material world. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, we did mention a little earlier, and I don't have my... What time is it now? 45. 45. Huh? 45. Already, huh? 45, yeah. So, we can take two or three minutes if there's any comment or question on this, because we have to finish a little earlier today. Let's say we have five minutes. Yes. Grihastha <coughs> Ashram, even though somebody is a devotee, he has to work outside. Even though somebody is a devotee, as a Grihastha, he has to work outside. Then uh, Artha, he has, to, he has to work, he has to collect the money for the maintenance. So he has to work and to, uh, has to collect the money, yes. So, so the question the, is? Yeah, for the devotee Grihastha, how it, it can be properly applied because he has to... How it can be properly applied for Grihastha devotees? The answer is actually nicely given and explained in the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Very important instructions given by Srila Prabhupada to Grihastha, to household, devotee householders, whereby Prabhupada explains that even for Grihasthas, the primary aim should not be money, should not be material gain. And Prabhupada also explains how householders, devotee householders, should try to find an engagement or occupation as simplified as possible, as simple as possible, to meet their basic necessities. Whatever will facilitate or favor their advancement in spiritual life. Better to take some kind of occupation that may give less money but allow one to maintain one's Krishna consciousness. Because very often 
we make decisions, those who are working, that, okay, I'll get, you know, if I get this job, I'll get a better, better salary, and ultimately it's better for me. But if, if making that choice means that you don't have time to chant the Holy Name, and that you're away from home uh, and from your family, and it is affecting negatively your Krishna consciousness, then better to take another occupation that will be more favorable to your practice of Krishna consciousness. But the main point here also in the seventh canto that Prabhupada explains is that actually householders, the majority of our householders, their occupation should be connected with agriculture. And that's very difficult if you live in the city. I mean, you can have a little balcony, little garden, grow a few carrots, you know, a few tomatoes. Um, but it's very difficult to plow or to have, you know, <laughs> no place to plow in cities, you know, everything is roads and whatnot. So it's very clear, actually, this, the, the, the lifestyle and, and the mm, preferred, recommended, ideal occupation for the vast majority of people in the world including our devotees. I mean, if you're every day going out with a book bag, keep doing that. <laughs> but, you know, what percentage of our devotee householders are doing that? If they have a full-time job, I mean, they're lucky if they can even go to the temple once a week. I mean, some come for Janmashtami once a year. <laughs> if, if that... <laughs> So it means that actually the whole modern setup is not natural. And therefore Prabhupada spoke very clearly and strongly against this kind of system. <clears throat> Encouraging devotees to actually come closer to what the Vedic culture and Vedic uh, lifestyle is, is, is uh, advocating. That doesn't mean that we stop our devotional activities even if we have to be uh, even even if we have, uh, if we find ourselves rather in that kind of situation, which is for the vast majority majority of our devotees, it's not ideal to work in a factory. But if you're working in a factory, chant Hare Krishna. If you can relocate in a more natural setting, well, chant Hare Krishna and do that also. <clears throat> so. Uh, that's the point, actually, that when we uh, nicely and regularly read and hear our Shastra, then we will understand what we should be doing, those who are householders, in terms of occupation. So that we can be closer to realizing the primary goal of life, which is to be Krishna conscious and to be associating with devotees. And it's extremely difficult for the vast majority of devotees who are householders working in the city with less association. And uh, in, in, you know, most of our devotees don't have at their workplace association with devotees. Few, very few. And they're most fortunate who happen to be working in a place where there's a devotee. Huh, you know. Most actually don't have that, that uh, great fortune. <coughs> So, if there's any other question, we can keep it for tomorrow. Thank you all very much. Jai Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Eki Jai Sri Lepo Padiki Gaur Pivanandi Yeah. Okay.